Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and this year I'm going to get my projects finished. If you watched my last video, I had a quilt that had been sitting in the bin for 23 years. Well, these crazy quilt squares have been sitting in a bin for 32 years. Oh my goodness. So we're going to get this finished. Now, what I'm going to do is because this is going to take a bit of time to finish, I've got lots to show you. I'm going to split this up into three parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pillow out of some of the same fabrics that I still had around, believe it or not. I still have some of these fabrics. And we're going to make a pillow in the crazy quilt form. Uh, because I only have six of these squares. That's all I ever made. My second video, I'm going to show you how I do the decorative embroidery stitching, and we're going to make the actual pillow that will match the quilt. And on the third part, we're going to complete this into a quilt by adding the sashings in the binding and the backing and the batting inside. So keep watching and we're going to start to show you the crazy quilt process, but we're going to do it in a little bit of a larger square to fit a pillow. Okay, here we go. the usual supplies that you need when you're sewing and uh, erasable fabric pen will come in handy when you're trying to mark out a straight line for cutting and the thread to use is just use one that's kind of a basic color that will match most of your fabrics and you're going to want a piece of fabric for your foundation and depending on the size that you're wanting to make your squares that is the size that you need and depending on how big you want, your quilt will be how much you will need to buy for your unleached cotton or muslin or whatever you want for your backing. And of course, all your scraps of fabric will be used up nicely for a crazy quilt. And I forgot to mention the ironing board and the iron, which because you'll be wanting to iron all your seams open before you do your next piece. And it's kind of handy to have this set up right by your sewing machine so you don't have to keep getting up and down and then you can iron right beside after each piece and you might notice that on every square I have used the same fabric for the center and I just thought these little girls are really cute so each of my starting points do have the little girl in the middle and I've worked out from those I did use the foundation method back then and I have got different scrap pieces of fabric on all of these squares. But the thing to remember is if you're using light colored fabric, then I wouldn't choose to do a dark background. As you can see here, you can see the dark on the underside and the seam. Back then, I had my own way of doing the crazy quilt. And it looks like what I had done was I had folded under all my edges and then I sewed directly on top and that's why you've got this piece of fabric coming over into this one. And here's a close-up. And you can see what I did all those years before is I fold over my fabric and there's my stitch line. And then I just stitch them all on top of each other. And that's why they're all on top like that. And then we've got the embroidery on top of that to cover that. There's so many different ways of doing it. This is a crazy quilt. I'm going to say no rules. Do it the way you want to do it. But I will show you the easiest way to get your crazy quilt started. To start, I have cut a piece of unbleached cotton. You can use muslin. You can use any fabric you want. It's probably better to stay with a neutral color. So as I showed in the other one, you're not going to have um, your background showing through to a really thin fabric. So this particular one I've cut it 17 by 17. Here's my first piece. I'm going to start placing it in the middle of my foundation. 
And traditionally, it's with a five-sided piece. So here's my one, two, three, four, five. And then you just work around in either clockwise or anti-clockwise fashion, adding to each angle as you go. Here's my next piece of fabric here. And you're going to be right sides together. And you might not find a piece that matches exactly. Let's start on this one, actually, because that one matches really well. So we're going to put these two together, matching up our raw edges. I have a quilting foot and it measures exactly one quarter inch to the side of my pressure foot, presser foot. And so I will start right at the top of my two fabrics where they meet and we'll just sew straight down. And every time you sew one seam, you want to open that up and press it down. I take it from this side and push out and that opens up that seam nicely and then you're ready to do your next one. This is the next one we're going to be doing and so we need to follow this line right up and we need to cut this one off. Now I don't want to have a big long piece up here so I'm going to cut some of this off and you can cut at an angle so it has more interest. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring it off at about this angle like that. So we'll cut that off there. And now I've got this piece to do here. And it's nice if you can find a piece that fits on that length. And that one fits well there. Again, you're doing right sides to right sides. So we're matching up this here and our raw sides here. And we'll take and sew that across. Decide what fabric you want to put on next and then find your angle. This is your next angle here. So you can see that it's going up like this. So that's not gonna work <clears throat> for when you put your fabric on, but don't worry. It'll just be a little bit of extra in your seam allowance. And I don't really want this great big piece so I'm going to cut this off here, and I've already actually done that. So I've just cut it down there, and now I'm going to come back in with this piece. And so on this corner, I've matched up basically almost my corner to the corner, and this I'm going to bring corner to corner, and I will stop sewing when I get to the uh, fabric underneath right here. And my fabric, it's just underneath there. I can see it underneath this fabric here. And we'll stop on the end of that. And again, always take it and iron it. I'm on this angle here right now. So I want to maintain that angle. And so my piece of fabric would go like so. So you can see where I need to change my angle. So again, coming in here. And then just taking off a little bit of this angle here. Again, it doesn't have to be straight because it'll all just be in the seam allowance. And now I don't have to have that piece of fabric as big as it is. In fact, it's kind of fun and easy just to match it up exactly to the size of your fabric. So you can choose to end it there, and that's exactly what I'll do. So here's the end right here. So I'm going to take it off right there. And it doesn't matter the angle that you cut it off at because you can change that angle on your next round. And I didn't quite cut it perfectly here. It doesn't matter. And I will stop on my top fabric this time because that's as much as I've got. First one, second, third, fourth, and now we're back to our fifth angle, our last angle up here. So we follow our angle and we come straight through here. So you can just pick this up and just take that off. It doesn't have to be accurate. This is our fifth angle here, but this piece of fabric comes down this way, but we want to include that in this angle here. So what I'm going to do is when we lay right sides to right sides, this is my next piece, 
I'm going to bring this one to the end here and then I'm going to find my corner here and then we'll just sew along in here. Again, it'll be a little more in the seam allowance, but it doesn't matter. It's a crazy quilt. And again, here's my end here. I'm not going to go any further than that. So I'm going to cut it off there and I can choose any angle I want. So why don't we just for fun go up the other way and I'm going to come up this way. Now you could cut this off exactly in a perfect strip, but I like to have a different angle every time. So there's our angle there. Here's a piece of fabric that we're going to put on top. Let's turn that over and now we're going to sew from this corner to that corner. That was our first angle right here. So now, <clears throat> instead of having to cut into these all the time, it's not necessary, you can leave them there. My next piece of fabric, I'm going to follow that line. But I need to have all these little ends covered. So I'm just going to use that line. I'm going to move it back until I've covered any openings. And then on this particular one, I'm going to sew from my fabric underneath to the fabric underneath. So if I want to cut that off, it's easier. And I'm going to stop at my fabric underneath there. Hey, we're getting further out. This was my angle. It doesn't mean I have to have that exact same angle this way because my last piece of fabric was here. So I'm going to take my piece of fabric that's the furthest one in and match up those lines. So here I am here. So I will come through this way. And again, on this corner. So we'll cut this corner off. Now this is getting to be quite a long piece. So I don't have a piece of fabric that that's long because I don't have strips. I've got hunks and different shapes and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple pieces of fabric together. So <clears throat> I'm going to put these two together first. And then when those opened up, then I've got two pieces of fabric. Instead of having just one long piece that's exactly the same, and then I'll bring that through for my next piece. So let's sew these two together first. Now, if you want to get real precise with your angles, you can definitely come in with your ruler and rotary cutter and cut them off that way. But this is a crazy quilt. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so this is where we're placing it. And because we don't have a perfect line, then you just line it up as close as you can. So I'm going to start at this corner here and then I'll just come straight across. And yes, you're going to have a little bit there, but that's fine. Now we're just going to sew straight across. Now it really doesn't matter how you put your pieces on. You're just filling up your square. Now this one here, I've got another, my next piece is going to be here. I'm just going to match it to my edge here and making sure I don't have any openings here and I'm going to stop here. So I'm just going to cut off my fabric at that point right there. Doesn't matter what angle you make. We're going to sew from there to there. And on this one, I'm going to start where my fabric is on the underneath. And the next piece, I want to make sure it's a nice long one. I want to make sure it covers my edge here so I don't have to put another piece here. So that seems to work right about there. So I'm just going to flip that back. And that's where I'm going to sew along all the way along here. So remember, this is our first five sided piece in the middle here. And I started with this one, follow my angle this way, this way, this way. Those are my first pieces. And then when I got to the next level, I didn't want to have it exactly the same as this because otherwise it's going to start to be boring. It's going to look like a log cabin, but 
a crazy quilt. And I don't like that. I want it to look crazy. So this one I followed, but you'll see on the next angle, this is my next angle, but this one I brought out. So that created a different angle here. Here's my next one. This one's just slightly tilted this way. And I'm changing it, following an angle on each side, but just changing it slightly. And you have to do that for, depending on the piece of fabric you're gonna use next as well. So all you're watching for is you've got to cover your holes. So let's say I want to put another piece right here. Now here's, this is the angle I've worked on for this piece. The next angle would be here. Not following it 100%, but you can give it, use it as a guide. So there's my angle there. But if I want to kind of slightly come off like this, that is totally fine. So let's put another piece right here. And as long as I'm covering this hole in here, I'm good to go. And I tend to match up edges here. It just makes it so you don't have to uh, find another angle on the side. So I'm going to sew down here next. And if you get to a point where you're thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? There's always a way to come in and correct or fix. Because I created this angle here, it's sewn down here, but it's got a raw edge here. So I've got to get in there so I can get a piece of fabric that will sew across that so there's no open edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to create an angle from here to here and I'll just go through. If it's easier for you, you can come in with a fabric pen and just mark through where you're going to cut with your scissors. This probably won't show up very well on this color, but it'll give me a little bit of a marking. Okay, so you can take that away, come back in with your scissors, and then just cut where you marked. And then you've got a straight edge again to work with. I'm purposely trying to make it so it's as hard as possible so you know how to add your next pieces if it happens to you. So just like over here where I sew two pieces of fabric together, I'm going to sew three pieces of fabric together up here. So then we'll have one, two, and another piece coming over here. So it's long enough to fit over here. But I'm not going to sew it straight through like this. I want to try to sew it so it's coming off at a different angle. So I might sew up like that, and then that would be more like that. And you would, you would just change the angle a bit down there. So it doesn't look like I've sewn all these pieces together. And then this one, I can come back and maybe sew down this way. And so when that one comes over, it'll have a different angle again, just so it's not looking like a straight line like this one is. So here's our three pieces sewed together. So you can come through and you can just take off all that excess and cut that off. So then you're going to be putting right sides together and obviously you don't have a nice clean edge here. That's okay. It's a crazy quilt. So I'm going to match up my corner here. And then I'm just going to move this up until I have got my edge onto the other corner here. And there we have it there. And then I'm just going to put a pin right where I want to cut it. So I'll take this with my ruler now, and I'll just make it easier for myself. And I'll trim from corner to my pin marking. It doesn't have to be perfect. And let's just cut that off. And now when you come back to sew that on, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing. 
And again, if the cut's not the same as what you've got below, it doesn't matter. And then that's where I will pin it. So we're just going to sew along from here to there. And when you've got your seams like this, you can open these up and then it won't be as much to embroider through all the thicknesses of fabric. So just you can finger press it open and then sew through there. Again, if you lose track of where you are, come back to your middle piece. And this was the angle we did for this one. Not exactly the same angle. You can keep changing it. Now, the next one would be up and down. That would cut off half of my fish, but I like, kind of like my fish. and I don't want to lose my fish. So I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to pop it on the top of the fin of my little fish there. And then I'm just going to angle it until I'm past this little hole here. And then I'll bring it up again to there. And then that's where I'll cut my next angle. So again, you can use your marking pen. So I'm going to cut that off there. Now, you can see what's happened here. I sewed this one all the way down. So don't worry about, you can just leave that there and you can sew right over top of it. So I'm just gonna come in here and then come up. And then we've got our guide. It'll be underneath the quilt and you'll never see it. So now we're at the stage again where we might have to piece again. So then go get round and find the fabric you want to piece together and just make it long enough to go from here to here like we did up in here changing your angles so it's different all the way along. So you've got lots of interest again. And this is the edge I'm going to be sewing to here and if it's uh, bothersome for you to have it crooked then by all means just come over and straighten it up to make it easier for sewing. I'm going to keep my blue edge here and take off on the green. So just come through and clean it up. And now you've got a nice clean edge to come into. Make sure you've come off your edge here so you've got that completely finished on this side. You won't have to do that one anymore and then just follow through and sew along. Open up your seams again so it won't be so bulky for your embroidery later. We just got this little corner to fill in, looking for my angle, coming down and seeing where my edge is. Here's a hole here, so I want to make sure I cover up that hole. And then I might as well come over to the other side here. So that will be my corner there that I have to fill in. So here's my line. Oh, there we go. If you have a piece of fabric and you can see the foundation through it, you can always add another piece of fabric underneath and then you won't see it. Like so. And that might be better for you. So when you're doing that, you're just going to sew all of these pieces together, obviously upside down sewing up onto this line here, sewing these together. And when those flip back over, they'll all be enclosed and it won't be as see-through if that's what you like. When you start having some pieces hanging over, I like to flip it over. This is the beauty of the foundation. And you can just go around and trim up to your foundation and then you just get a better sight of where you're at. Now this 
is going to be cut down anyways, but it still gives me a good guide. It's kind of like just like when a picture is framed, it just looks better and you can see where you're at. Okay, we finished this corner. Now we're on to this side. I found a nice long strip that I could add down through here. And when you're working with long, thin strips, they tend to kind of not sit where you want them to. It's harder to sew a straight line. So best to come in with your ruler and make your line wherever you want it. And again, I'm following this line here, but a little bit off. And I'm just making sure that I've got this covered here. So I'm going to draw a line right about there with my fabric pin. And then I can cut that off. And we've got a guide to place our very thin strip. And now we've got that line that we can use this to place against so we know that we're sewing it on straight. If you tend to sew it on crooked, then when you go to turn it, it's not going to sit flat. So that's why you do want a little bit of a straight line. And I found another long one. And I wanted to bring in some more pinks in here so it's not getting too dark. And so that's why I chose this one. And I don't want it to be in stripes here. So I'll just change my angle again. And again, we'll sew up to here, to the corner, and down. And now I just have my little corner to fill up here. I've got a cute little pink piece here that will fit on that corner there nicely. And then I just need to fill in this. I've got another piece here. And so I'll put right sides together. And it's hard to tell with the batik fabric. And hopefully when that comes over, it will be enough. Now I haven't been a very good teacher and I haven't been showing you what I've been doing here. So I did show you to press out like this on the top side, but if you don't want that bulk on the other side, you really should come in and open up this seam in here and then each side will get pressed to the other side. So this is nice and open. So you can open this up, pressing with your finger, and then come in with your iron. And this is just so there's not as much bulk when you do your embroidery, if you're going to do your embroidery on the top. But it's still a good idea to open up those seams on the back side. And right sides together, let's see how we did. Oh, we're just going to make it right to the edge here and right to the edge here. And I can bring it down just a little bit to make sure I can see where I'm sewing. And we'll sew from corner to corner. And uh, if you want to hold these together, and by all means, do put your pins in just to keep it in place while you sew. And I'm going to turn this around just so I can square up that corner. And then I can get a really good view on where I'm at. And there we have another corner finished. And now let's come up and finish this section. I'm going to turn this. And again, have you forgotten where you're going? I have. No, I'm just kidding. So this angle, I'm going to change the angle a little bit more. So that's where we're at. This angle like this. And just because I've got some long pieces here, I think I might throw some long pieces over here. And I just happen to have one that will fit right in here. So I'm going to do right sides together. Here's my little corner in here that I want to close up. So I'll come up to there and I can just angle it however I want. So corner to corner here. If you're worried about all the bulk underneath, well, you can certainly cut it off if you want to. It is not necessary, but if it bugs you, then cut it off. Now, sometimes this will happen. I had planned to make sure that this blue piece got all the way to the edge, but I've changed my design, which is totally okay. And so now this time I've got to come over this one because we've got the raw edge here. So we'll plan to cover that 
all the way. So I'm not going to need this extra blue, so I will just take that off. I wanted to find a piece of fabric that was in one of my squares and I did find this one so that one will fit nicely in here and then I just need to find another little piece that will go up in here and I think that will just fit nicely and I'll use my ruler again and rotary cutter to make a nice straight line down here and then we can add that to our corner well I don't know if you caught my mistake but I cut the wrong side because now, when this is this way, it has to be like that. And that won't be big enough. So hopefully, I haven't messed this up. And I need to come back and I need to square up this edge. Let's try this again. So let's see how we did. So if this goes from here to here. And we did okay. We've got enough. I'll just flip that to the other side again because I like to see where I'm at so I'll cut that off our last corner and okay so where did we end up we're kind of going like this and then it was like this again we weren't following it but it's a guide so now we can do whatever we want to so we can take a little strip here and decide where we want to angle it so as long as you've covered up your holes and I don't want to go straight across because it's just too straight. I want to give it some character. So we're going to go about like that and we'll sew this little guy on. And you can trim up some of the bulk underneath that you don't need. And there's my next two pieces sewed together. I've cleaned up my edge. And we'll sew that on right here. Next piece, found one that will go corner to corner and covering up my space. So I'll sew this across. And there's our crazy quilting that we're going to use for the pillow. And that completes part one of how to sew a crazy quilt. This particular one will be for a pillow but you can make them any size you want. Stay tuned for part two, and that's when I'm gonna be showing you how to do the fancy embroidery work on your crazy quilt squares, and then we'll be using a zipper to make our pillow to enclose it to add to our wonderful quilt. So keep watching and watch for the next video for part two.